having quite the saga. Uh, so how we need to replace the four stay because of the issues of the wires parting. So we came in early, we dropped anchor, and for the last two days we've been trying to get a hold of one of the two riggers in New Caledonia. And so we finally got a hold of him this morning, but he's doing a boat delivery and out of the country for three weeks. So that's no good. And But he teed us up with the second rigger, and so we rang up him, and he's on holidays for four weeks. So that's not really good either. So we thought we were going to be quite stuck for a bit, but luckily the ladies in the marina were very helpful and we found the manufacturer. So that's basically where the riggers go to get their gear. So they spoke to them on the phone and they're working the public holidays this weekend as well. So win-win for Nanji, unlucky for them. I'll have to take the furler down and looks like we'll probably have to pull it apart because I'm going to have to take the four stay on a bus trip out in the industrial area to go to this manufacturer to get the four stay made and then bring it back. So I'll probably have to take the furler apart because I don't think the swaged end will go back up the furler. So a little bit more of a, a bit more of a hassle, a little bit more of a work, but a bit more of an adventure, I suppose. glad we were careful about it because it's completely screwed. <laughs> like, look at that, it's gotten so much worse in that short amount of time. Cactus, how did it all happen? So the halyard was getting wrapped around the forestay and it was twisting it the same way and untwisting them all. So we'll probably put a offset. Yeah, I think so because we've had a look around here and there's nothing that'll fit um, our foils but um, yeah well maybe we could make something. Don't lose that nut. <laughs> With the four stay and furler removed from Nanji, we set off in search of Boniface, the manufacturer who could make us a new four stay. Luckily, we bumped into a local man who offered to give us a lift to the manufacturer on the other side of Numia. Yes, the opposite. I just got in with them to see if there's somebody who speaks English who can help you out. Yeah, I'm excellent. in a bit Thank of a you. rush. So. We're definitely in the right place. When I built the furler, I wasn't thinking I'd have to pull it apart. So I used a lot of Loctite on the screws, so it makes it pretty hard to crack them open. And to put these sections together, I had to use a hammer. And I was tapping them together. So to get them apart, I've had to think about it. Here's my idea. From the marina, we could hear music and went to investigate. We stumbled across a local dance competition and checked out some of the performances. Well, that was quite the hassle. I think I need to learn how to speak French a bit better. But we've got it. 
It's a lot more expensive than what they quoted, so we had quite the dilemmas for the last three hours trying to get the price right, but we're there. Now it's got to go back to the boat and install it. I gotta learn French. We finally have our new force day and today Yoshi is going to go up and we're just going to check that it's the right length before we put the furler onto it. See what happened here at the top of the foils. This is the very top foil from the furler. From all the banging around it's got banged in somehow. I don't know what it's hit. It was pretty violent though that 50 knots so it was shaking around a bit. Might have even connected with the mast. I don't know. But I'm just going to cut the top off of that, clean all that up, make it smooth again. So that is what cut the um, halyard, you reckon? That Yeah, I reckon that's what cut the halyard. Yeah, the, the chafe is quite a sharp edge and if the halyard was wrapping on that, it would, yeah, just get sliced. Mm. Lucky Benita's around. I've built all the furler and everything's put together. I was telling her to hurry up so we could hoist it and get it up. I forgot to put on the main bit. That's what the halyard attaches to to hoist the sail. That could have been disastrous. One tick to Benita. One last task is to rivet this here onto the mast. So this is what the halyard's gonna go through to offset it. And then we're complete. Hello. You ready to hoist me? I'm always ready to hoist ya. Guns. I'm undecided, I think maybe I should have put the sail on first. I've got the head sail cart here, but I know, because if I put it in here, I'm just kind of guessing where it's going to sit. Pretty sure it sits around here, but... Quantum really looked after us when we got their, our sow from them. They, um, they made up this emergency sow repair kit full of everything that, you know, you need to um, make repairs yourself. And uh, that's exactly what I'm doing today. We had a little tear. Um, uh, when, when we experience those 50 plus knot winds um, on the passage over so uh, I'm just going to fix that up so that it doesn't get any worse and be like a brand new sail again. Whilst in the marina we were lucky enough to cross paths with the great sailor John Sanders. This man is a legend. He has solo circumnavigated around the world five times and is currently completing the last leg of his 10th circumnavigation. He circumnavigated solo and non-stop twice, then a few years later he went around again three times solo and non-stop. He holds the world record for the longest distance ever sailed non-stop which is over 71,000 nautical miles. John is a very humble man and we were lucky to be neighbours. We shared many conversations and it was amazing to ask him questions and to listen to his experiences. Because you went around twice, did you originally think you were going to go twice or you just planned to go once? Oh, no, no. You'd planned to do twice? But I was pretty uh, done to wait there. Oh, uh, yeah. Bye. Yeah, yeah. And then so look, when you went to go three, you're like, I'm, I'm going for three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was wow. all. Australian boats are 690 days at sea. <laughs> What did you do when you came back? 728. Oh, 728. <laughs> when you came back, smoke. Oh, wow. So, what, what did you do when you, um, when you got back, back on, on land? land? <laughs> Fell over. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, whereabouts do you reckon was the, was the most rowdy waters that you would have dealt with? Oh, it's something nice. Yeah. Through it been a winter. Yeah. <laughs> been upside down to us in the boat. Same as ours, this we get smaller. Yeah. Did you flit and then and come I learned, back up? Yeah, learned yeah. how not to do it. Mainly just drag something behind you. So yeah. You know, surf down away. Yep, yeah, you drag. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like you'd, I suppose, with big swells like that, you would have to, you'd still get get a fair bit of speed surfing down, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. bare poles and still everything six knots. You'll get a cresting wave, 
steep on the surf down it. Yeah. No digs in the bottom, the roaches. Yeah, oh. yeah. And you lose your winch handles. Oh, yeah. It goes so up loud. Down, all your floorboards go the wrong way, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> You've spent every month of the year in the Southern Ocean, oh, you say? At yeah. some stage. Yeah. Uh, three times, I think. I was uh, home too. For three days. Oh. Yeah, four days. Uh, 200 miles south of South Africa, mid winter. <laughs> right, sick of it, so I thought, this is dangerous, so I'll take off and try to get north from my did to the peak down anyway. Right. Well, seventh dance, I think. Seventh through and the seventh yeah. Panama Canal, four uh, sewers cut out, and uh, oh, five Cape Horn. Five Cape Horn. I've been around Cape Horn in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you look at forecasts these days, or are you just like, oh, I'm no, leaving tomorrow, and? Grip, but I can't find it. Pull it up, I've got computer on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one sailing around the world that doesn't know what the weather's going. Yeah. To be. A barometer. Exactly. And I, certainly, um, if the wind ever goes northeast, you know, southern hemisphere, and it goes even a bit more north, you know, it's going to. It's going to come around. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, have you got ATF radio? No, we we use a uh, the satellite when we're offshore. The iridium? Oh yeah, I've got the iridium. Yeah. 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 But I don't pick up weather on it. I don't know how it is. Oh. <laughs> I think I've got net for it, but I don't know how it is. <laughs> With Nanji ready to sail once again, we say goodbye to John. Did a bit more food shopping. Trolley life. And off we go to explore New Caledonia. That's another episode of Sailing Nanji. The boat has been fixed and we are sailing and we are free again. Yeah, Nanji is absolutely dominating and uh, obviously we're out and exploring so as you haven't seen a video from us for a bit but yeah, we're... In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're deep in the southern lagoon of New Caledonia and just yeah. having a hell time. It's, it's amazing out here and Nanji's feeling really good and we're feeling very confident in her so yeah we don't have any reception um to see who our new patrons are but thank you guys so much for supporting us and getting on board we'll thank you in the next episode once we've got that list come through off the internet mm. yeah yeah so cheers frothers yeah uh, you guys make this all possible, so thank you. Yeah, the Sailing Nanji Froth family is, is the biggest thing that's going on with us at the moment, so uh, yeah, we can't thank all of you enough. So yeah. cheers, and thanks to all your legends that have uh, that have helped support us and, uh, and have donated and contributed towards us getting a wind vane. So yeah. we look forward to seeing what that tally is when we get back because we can't, um, can't wait to get it. <laughs> got no idea what's going on. But um, yeah, and a, a big thank you to Blake from SB Squanda. He gave us some info about the rigger, so uh, that helped us heaps. So thanks, Legend. Yeah, cheers, man. Yep. Uh, and a big thank you to John Sanders for letting us chat to him and ask him questions and harass him for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was such lucky on our behalf that, that, that our paths like, crossed because this guy is a legend. It, like, we nicknamed him Goat. Like, in an endearing way greatest of all time yeah <laughs> you know like he is he's literally just... he's the kelly slater of the sailing world he dominates over kelly like this guy has yeah. world records he's he spent bloody 728 days at sea solo like, we just sat there knowing that he was right next to us at night and just kind of imagined some of the experiences that he has gone through and like, yeah, absolutely like, amazing. Like to be able to sit down and see him every morning. He's and gone around the horn five times. He even did it once backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Just to like to wake up in the morning and look outside and say good day to that man, and then yeah, have a chat to him every day. It it really means a lot to us. And yep. yeah, so yeah, thanks, John. Cheers, John Sanders. You're an absolute <laughs> legend, mate. Oh, by the way, he's 78. 78. Oh my goodness. Dominating. Just, if that's incredible. not a bit of inspiration, I don't know what is. Like that man is next level. Yeah. He, like his predecessors got knighted and that sort of stuff. Like, and but, oh. he he's done what they've done. Like what? He's dominated, dominated. what they've done. He smashed what they achieved out of the park. So, like, so yeah, so much respect for you, John. Um, yeah, we we are just so overwhelmed that um, you took the time out to talk to us. And yeah, um, yeah, we we were. 
we're we still really appreciate your company, mate. It <laughs> yeah, was really good. It was so good. Yep. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Right. <laughs> we could talk about Yeah. So thanks for watching another episode of Sailing Nanji. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Yeah. Catch ya. Alright. See you guys. Peace.